My name is Shamik Sarkar, and today I'll be talking about our work, Simultaneous Power-Based Localization of Transmitters for Crowdsource Spectrum Monitoring. So I'm the third author for this work, and I'll be presenting this on behalf of Mojkan Khaledi, who couldn't be present here. So first, let me try to motivate you all regarding the need for spectrum monitoring. We all know that SDRs are becoming very common. In fact, we envision that in near future, our mobile devices will come with integrated SDRs. And as it happens, various threats will appear. For example, there could be a set of virus-affected SDRs leading to a jamming scenario. There could be cases of selfish users altering their radio settings for using off-limit bands. Or there could be even cases of secondary users not backing off in presence of the primary user. Now, anticipating these threats, the next logical question to ask is, how do we prevent spectrum offense? For that, FCC has an enforcement bureau that relies on complaints and manual investigations. However, as you might expect, this is time-consuming, human-extensive, and costly. With all these facts in hand, we realize that we need an efficient spectrum monitoring method. And for that, we envision a novel approach that detects and localizes the spectrum offenders using crowdsourcing. So we consider that a wide range of receivers would participate in the crowdsourcing, sense the RF medium, and report their sense data to a detection and localization module located somewhere in the cloud. The detection and localization module would run multi-source localization algorithms and find the location of the transmitters that are active right now. And this result can be compared with a database of allowed spectrum usage and any kind of anomaly could be reported instantaneously. In our model, we considered that the crowdsourcing devices would report the received signal strength, also known as RSS, the timestamp of the measurement, and the location of the receiver. So you see there are two important components in this whole idea. First is having an algorithm that can detect an unknown number of transmitters that are active simultaneously and localize them. And the second part is uh, selecting a set of receivers from the available ones for the purpose of sensing the RF medium. And this is where our work, SPLOT, comes into picture. SPLOT can perform both these jobs of uh, multi-source localization and receiver selection in a very efficient way. The rest of my talk is structured along this outline slide. First, we'll talk about the core idea of SPLOT, which is multi-source localization, followed by its experimental evaluation, and then I'll talk about the receiver selection and incentive algorithm. And finally, I'll summarize. So the heart of SPLOT, as I said before, is the localization algorithm that can detect an unknown number of transmitters that are active simultaneously. This problem is challenging in this context due to multiple factors. First, we don't know the number of transmitters that we need to localize beforehand. Second, the received power at a receiver that is coming from multiple transmitters is not simply separable. Then we have the issue of mobility of transmitters and receivers. And finally, unpredictability of receivers' participation in the crowdsourcing. There is some related work in this area. The first one uses quasi-expectation maximization. However, this algorithm requires the number of transmitters that we need to localize as an input. The other one uses motion control robots for localizing the transmitters. And as you might see, that these constraints, they don't allow us to use these solutions directly in our problem because neither we have any control over the receiver's motion, nor we know the number of transmitters beforehand. So our approach in SPLOT begins with two important observations. The first one says that the receivers that are located near a transmitter, usually they observe higher power than the ones that are far away. And the second observation says that the received signal strength at a receiver is primarily affected by the nearest transmitter. Now, with these two observations in mind, first we create a spatial map of the RSS measurements, and then identify the local maximas. Now, what are these local maximas? So let's say we have a receiver here, and we create a circle of radius R around it. We bring in a transmitter and say that it could be anywhere inside this circle. Then we ask the question, for any possible location of this transmitter inside this circle, 
what is the minimum RSS that this receiver would observe? Note down the minimum RSS. And then we go back to the spatial RSS map. And we call a RSS measurement to be local maxima if that is above this minimum value and it is higher than its neighboring, locally neighboring measurements, giving it the name local maxima. But how does it help us? It helps us because now for each local maxima, we can say with a high certainty that there must be a transmitter around it within a circle of radius r. So essentially now we have an approximate region of presence for each of these transmitters that we need to localize. And so we can say, now we have boiled down the problem of multi-source localization to a set of single source localization problems. And for each of these single source localization problem, we use a matrix inversion method which basically subdivides the area inside the circle in form of grids and tries to estimate the transmit power field from each of those voxels. And then decide that the location of the transmitter is the voxel that corresponds to maximum transmit power. So this approach is governed by this matrix equation where Y is the receive signal strength on L receivers, X is the transmit power field, uh, W is the weight matrix, and N is a combination of noise and fading. So with this equation in hand, what we first do is we estimate the transmit power field X from the received signal strength, which is Y. And they declare that the location of the transmitter is the voxel that corresponds to maximum transmit power. However, this inversion problem is ill-posed, so we, we use uh, least square regularization for solving this. Now I'll talk about the evaluation of SPLOT. So first, I'll talk about the metrics that we used. First is the localization error, which is basically the RMS error between the actual location of transmitter and the estimated location. Then we have the cardinality error, which gives the fraction of time during which your number of estimated transmitters is not correct. And then we have the OSPA metric, which is a combination of the previous two errors. And it basically says, uh, it basically penalizes the localization error based on the number of transmitters that you failed to detect. So for evaluation, the first setup that we considered is the orbit test bed. And we had an area of 20 meter cross 20 meter with 14 receivers, the red circles, and four transmitters at four corners of the area. This was an open environment without any obstacles. And in this environment, we first evaluated our matrix inversion approach, which is the single source localization approach. All the figures are uh, here in, are in meters, and we compared the performance of matrix inversion and, com and compared it with the maximum likelihood estimation approach. And we see that both in terms of the average localization error and the variance of the localization error, matrix inversion method performs better. So we take this matrix inversion method for our single source localization, and this is our building block for the multi-source localization problem, as I explained before. Now we have the result for multi-source localization problem, and here on the x-axis we have the number of transmitters that we need to localize. On y-axis we have the localization error in meters. The first observation is that in setup one, the localization error for plot is almost always less than one meter. The second thing is that the localization error doesn't really depend on the number of transmitters that we need to localize. And we see that the performance of SPLOT is significantly better than the QuasiEM algorithm. Just to remind you that QuasiEM needs the number of transmitters that we need to localize as an input. However, uh, SPLOT doesn't need that. Then we also analyze the cardinality error and OSPA metric. We have three penalty levels of one meter, two meter, and five meter. The first observation is that the cardinality error increases as we increase the number of transmitters. And this is sort of intuitive. However, the OSPA metric doesn't uh, increase significantly even with a high penalty of five meters. And the next setup was a cluttered office environment with 44 sensors in it. And this was a 15 meter cross 15 meter area. And here we have the result for setup two. What we see is that for SPLOT, in setup two, the localization error is almost always less than three meters, and again, significantly better than quasi em In these two setups that I talked about, uh, mobility was simulated, because those were like, uh, I mean, fixed setup. So we also did some experiments with real-world mobility, where 
uh, our volunteers carried the transmitters and receivers around. And this is the device that we had for transmitter with a transmit power of one watt, and the RTL SD are attached to mobile devices as receivers. And we had an Android app for processing the signal samples. Uh, we did six experiments with these equipments. I'll talk about only three. So the re remaining three are sort of similar, only that the kind of mobility is different. So this is a uh, university indoor area. We considered the corridors only of a 40 meter cross 40 meter area. We had eight receivers, two transmitters, all of them mobile at normal walking speed. The other one was at university food court area. And here we had six receivers, three transmitters. The objective of this experiment was to identify if the localization error has any relationship with the number of transmitters that we need to localize. And this was done in the university campus area in an outdoor setting of 30 meter cross 50 meter. We had mobile and static obstacles like trees, buildings, and pedestrians. And both the receivers and transmitters moved in normal walking speed. Now we have the result for these six experiments. I talked about only three, and I, as I said before, the remaining, I talked about B, D, and F. The remaining three are sort of similar. The mobility is sort of different. Um, what we see is that on the y-axis we have the localization error in meter. What we see is that uh, for all of these experiments, the uh, um, localization error for SPLOT is less than five meters, again, significantly better than QuasiM. And for experiment CDE, uh, we have lower localization error. Again, this is intuitive because in these experiments, those receivers and transmitters were not significantly mobile or immobile. The experiment D that I said that we did in the food court area, here we have the result. We see that SPLOT doesn't really depend on the number of transmitters that we need to localize. However, the same cannot be said for the other algorithm. Now I'll talk about our receiver selection mechanism. So the question here is that there might be various um, a number of receivers that are willing to participate. We need to select only a few of them such that the spatial coverage is maximized. For that, we have a simple model. The willing or participating receivers will send their location to the controller. The controller would run our algorithm and select only a few of them. And then they will send those selected uh, receivers will sense the RF medium and report the data to the controller. And this would be repeated after an interval of t seconds. Before I get into the algorithm, I need to introduce a couple of things. First, we construct a weighted graph using all the available nodes. Here, the weight is the amount of overlap between the sensing region of two nodes. And then we define a new metric called degree expansion. So let's say we have a set of nodes S, and its neighboring set is NS. We ask the question, what is the minimum overlap of S with its neighboring set? We call that degree expansion. The idea is that we want to maximize that minimum overlap so that we have a higher spatial coverage. So essentially, the problem is that find a set of nodes S that maximizes the degree expansion. Unfortunately, the problem is NP-hard, so we use a heuristic solution, a greedy heuristic, that selects a node in each iteration based on its con marginal contribution to the degree expansion. Having selected the nodes, now I'll ask that how much do I need to pay to those who contributed? So now I enhance the model a little bit and say that the receivers not only report their location, they also report their cost of sensing. And the localization algorithm, the sampling or selection algorithm also considers this cost as a factor of the selection. And these participants would be paid after each cycle. So we need an algorithm that motivates the participants to report their cost truthfully. And here we have the mathematical formulation for that problem. We say that maximize the degree expansion, and essentially saying that maximize the spatial coverage and minimize the cost. So we uh, combine that in the ratio of degree expansion by cost. And this, has, this maximization has to be solved with respect to two constraints. The first one says that the payment scheme should be such that you will get more money if you report your cost truthfully. And the second one says, that your payment amount will always be greater than your actual cost of sensing. So essentially, the second constraint motivates the users to participate. And the uh, first constraint motivates the user to report their cost truthfully. For solving this, we basically extend our greedy algorithm. And in, again, in each iteration, we select one node. But not only based on 
degree expansion, we here consider the cost also. That's why we have the ratio of MI by CI. What about the payment? Well, I'm not going into the equation and all those details for the sake of time. But essentially what it says is that give the maximum amount to the user that the user could have declared and still got selected in the crowdsourcing. And we extended this algorithm in a couple of other ways. Uh, let's say we have a budget constraint for the controller. Then what do we do? Or we may say that we know the mobility of the receivers beforehand and select only those receivers that will be available for the next T second. Again, I'm not going into the details of these algorithms, but they're explained well in the paper. And for each of these algorithms, we came up with a payment scheme and proved that for these payment schemes provide incentive compatibility and individual rationality. I mean, it's saying that uh, it motivates the users to participate and motivates the user to report their cost truthfully. With that, I would, like, I would like to conclude saying we came up with slot and efficient algorithm for localizing an unknown number of transmitters that are active simultaneously, and a receiver selection mechanism and incentive mechanism for selecting a set of nodes and incentivizing them based on their contribution, and evaluated our framework using various experiments. This work can be extended in future in multiple directions. I'll mention two important ones is the effect of having multiple antennas on these crowdsourcing, some of these crowdsourcing devices, and making the algorithm robust against misreporting. So right now the uh, receivers might simply send false data. Uh, there is no way to stop them from doing that. How do we make the algorithm robust against that? Yeah, that's all from my side. Please let me know if you have any questions.